Hello, it's Gary again, and I'm out here in my orchard. It's about three days from spring, and I'm in pretty good mood. Uh, we have had a very mild winter. Uh, normally in Michigan, we would have snow on the ground, and it could be quite deep. But this year, we've hardly had any snow, no snow for Christmas, and the storms haven't been more than about four or five inches. So I'm quite happy, and uh, I'm getting a lot done outside. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is just some more observations in the orchard. And as you can see, we're looking down the row here, and these uh, apple trees are on um, M9s and M7As. M9 rootstock stands for mulling, which is a very dwarfing rootstock. And M7As are one of the, you might say, more vigorous rootstocks. It's not quite a semi-dwarf, but uh, I can keep the trees down uh, quite a bit on those rootstocks. But as these trees have grown, you'll notice that they're growing out into the row. And these are on 15-foot spacings uh, between rows. And so naturally, the trees would eventually fill in this row altogether. So when I'm pruning, one of the things I do is prune branches so that they will go off to the sides and not so far into the row because it makes it much more difficult to spray when I have branches right on top of me. Uh, I like to spray outward away from me, but if you have your row almost filled in with branches, that becomes very difficult. The other thing I wanted to do is just show you how making cuts, what are some of the results. Uh, they're not always the way you want them to be, but I just wanted to give you some idea. Here's some examples of branches that I pruned so that they're not running into the row. Now this one will be taken out this year because it's going out into the row, but over here, if you can see, maybe you can't see it, but this one comes and starts to go toward the south, as you, as you see me run my hand along there. And then this one comes out a little bit, but it's still within the row. And then over at this point, it's going off to the south again. So instead of all of this coming out toward me, it's going more straight this way so that I can get by it easily when I'm mowing in the orchard or I'm spraying. Uh, right now, the area that I have between the two trees of these two rows is only about three and a half feet. So um, I need to be careful not to allow too much growth. I'll trim it back and I'll have a little bit more space. In previous videos, I've always talked about getting rid of wood that's growing straight down. And this is one of the reasons. This is not going to add to any of the overall artistic look of the tree. And this is a branch that was growing down and branches naturally want to grow up toward the sunlight. And so this is what happens if you don't take these branches out. I also usually tell people to take out the branches that grow straight up. Here's an example of one that was not taken up and it looks like it was topped up here and it's split into three sections and it's grown about seven feet above where you can see here. So this will be taken out this year this one will be taken out, the one back here will be taken out, and this will reduce the overall size of the tree. Those um, branches there would produce some fruit, and any time you reduce the height of a tree, you're going to sacrifice some fruit. But I have 70 trees, so I don't really have to worry about that. The tree directly behind me uh, needs to be pruned this year, and fruit trees need to be pruned annually. If you don't, they'll continue to get thicker and thicker, and when the leaves are out, it will make it difficult for sunlight to get to the middle of the tree, which will affect the overall color of the fruit. It will slow ripening. And also, when wind can't circulate through the tree, when it rains, those leaves stay wet for a longer period of time, which encourages certain diseases like apple scab and powdery mildew, city blotch and fly speck, and a number of others. So you need to do that annual pruning. I hope you can see this, but this tree, even though it hasn't been pruned yet, you'll notice that the lowest branches are the ones farthest out. And then as we progress up, they get a little shorter and a little shorter. And the reason for that is we want to be sure that the entire tree gets maximum sunlight. If you have let branches down at the bottom that are shaded by the more aggressively or vigorously growing branches toward the top, what happens is you tend to take on an umbrella shape to the tree and the lower branches do not get enough sunlight they stop producing fruit, and they also will die if they get too much shade. And then you have to prune them off anyway. So if you keep that taper where it's wider at the bottom 
and more narrow at the top, then you'll get the best sun exposure for the tree. When pruning, if you leave too much of a stub, this is what you're gonna get, lots of extra growth. So um, you don't wanna make a flush cut, but you don't, a flush cut would be one where it's completely flat along the branch here where you're actually making a larger wound. But if you uh, cut it a little shorter than what this one is, you won't have as many um, sprouts coming back out. Some people, if they saw these blue-green patches as they're walking through the orchard, they get a little freaked out about it. But these are lichens and they're nothing to be concerned about. You see them on ornamental trees like maples, especially if there's a lot of shading. And uh, lichens basically uh, live, are living on the bark and uh, they're not harming the tree whatsoever. You tend to see more of it when you have very rainy seasons, which we had last year. If it's dry this year, all of this lichen will dry up and um, nothing to be concerned about. You don't need to spray for it. It's perfectly harmless. There might be a couple of other things you may want to consider. If you have some large trees or mini trees to do, you might want to break it up over a period of days or weeks. And the reason for that is if you have arthritis or carpal tunnel, you could have some real issues with uh, inflammation. So we try to spread it out here in our orchard. We're getting a little older. I'm 66 now, so I try to spread it out. Also, uh, one of the things I like to do is I will go through a row and cut out all the large cuts first, and then we come back and do the smaller cuts. And uh, that has worked out best for us. And I, I hope these uh, comments and uh, suggestions have been helpful. And uh, that's it for today. So this is Gary. I'll see you later. Bye.